Hi, this is Ola from Caribbean Weather Center. Welcome. And as indicated last week, today we're going to start with our experiment about making videos to educate you about uh, the weather, also inform you about weather events, weather forecasts, and everything related to, to the weather. And before I start, I would like you to remind you to please subscribe on our channel, on Caribbean Weather Center on YouTube, and also to click on the notification bell to get our latest videos. So today we want to start about, to talk about a very important topic. It's about the topic of El Nino, La Nina, neutral conditions. Many people are asking, what will we get this year? So first of all, let's talk about while the El Nino, well, where the El Nino, La Nina, neutral conditions form. In this case, it's over the Pacific Ocean, about the area of the 3.4, Nino 3.4. That's the area where it develops. And uh, we got in, in total two phases, um, the La Nina and the El Nino. And in between, we have just the neutral conditions. So this is very important to start off. I'm going to go to the next um, graph. And then can, I can explain about the El Nino and La Nina. To start off, the El Nino, it uh, happens when, for example, uh, we have westerly winds across the area of um, the Western Pacific, across the area of Australia, also Indonesia and the Philippines. We have westerly winds and then and across the Eastern and Central Pacific, we have weaker trade winds. When, you have, uh, when that happens, then you have more like a, like a flow that goes towards the Eastern Pacific, and then the warm waters are pushed towards that area of the Eastern Pacific and also towards the Central Pacific, and then you get upwelling of the warm waters over uh, this area with the El Nino, and then uh, cooler waters over the area of the Western Pacific. Then you have the coupling of the warm waters with the atmosphere and then you have the El Nino that brings more precipitation and an active season over the Eastern Pacific um, over areas such as rains in areas such as in Chile, Ecuador, Peru and an active season um, um, near the area of uh, Mexico. And then you have less precipitation over Australia and the Philippines and also over Indonesia. That's El Nino. As for La Nina, you have the opposite. Then you have the warm waters that are pushed towards uh, the west because of, of the strong easterly trade winds. And then you have the rains over Australia, the Philippines, and also um, Australia, the Philippines, and also over Indonesia. And then you have the um, colder waters moving towards the Eastern Pacific, also to the Central Pacific, and then you have uh, dry conditions over Peru, Ecuador, and also the area of Chile. So that's basically the difference between those two. And this one has the warm waters over the Eastern Pacific and, uh, and the Central Pacific, and the other one, La Nina, has the colder waters over those areas. Let's go to the next one, and you can see the, eff the effects, the, the, the impacts of um, both El Nino and La Nina. This is the El Nino, and then you have, when you have the El Nino with the warm waters over the central and also eastern Pacific, you have then more hurricanes, more activity towards uh, the eastern Pacific, and then less activity over the Atlantic, also over the par parts of the Caribbean, because of the impacts that the El Nino has over that area. So the waters are then cooler over the Atlantic uh, basin, or maybe on average, but you have other effects like, for example, uh, wind shear, the trade winds that are stronger, and also uh, more like uh, stability in the atmosphere. So that also does not help to get uh, the development of clouds and precipitation. So that's what happens with the El Nino. It causes precipitation across this area, but dry weather over that area of the Atlantic. So we go to La Nina. With La Nina, the opposite happens. Then you get uh, weaker trade winds, also uh, weaker wind shear, and uh, more instability in the atmosphere over the Caribbean, the Atlantic, and the opposite across the Eastern Pacific, as you have those cooler waters over the Central and Eastern Pacific. So that's basically the difference between those two. Also, uh, a more active hurricane season over the Atlantic, and less active season over the Eastern Pacific. You go to the next graph. 
we can see uh, basically right now we still have those blue shaded colors. Those mean uh, that, that right now we have negative anomalies. That means that uh, La Nina is still in place over the uh, uh, Central Pacific, also parts of the Eastern Pacific. And that means that La Nina is still in place, as said, but it will be weakening in the coming months. And I can show you on the next graph that uh, it has already been warming up a little bit. Those negative anomalies have been decreasing because temperatures are gradually going up. And if you see the next graph, you can also see that a wall area, a pool of warmer waters, in this case, this, these are positive anomalies. We were moving slowly towards the eastern Pacific and then uh, rise over the surface of the ocean. And mm. then when those temperatures go up, we will get closer and closer to uh, El Niño conditions. This, by the, the forecast by NOAA, as you can see on the next graph, is that by this summer, later on this summer, the second half of this year, we will then uh, possibly go from first the NOTA conditions in the next month or two, then towards uh, weak El Niño conditions by the second half of this year and also by fall. So the chances of El Niño are increasing. As you can see on the next graph, the chances of El Niño by this fall will be about 62%, 62%, that's quite high. So the chances of El Niño are increasing. So this year, if that happens, as you can see on the next graph, we will have fewer hurricanes across the Atlantic Basin, more hurricanes across the Eastern Pacific, and also um, unfavorable, unfavorable conditions for the development of very significant uh, precipitation and development of cyclones. So that means that basically the Atlantic and also the Caribbean will have less precipitation than normal. Also the ABC islands, that is something to take into account for in, in the coming months. So uh, basically, um, if we compare it to the last couple of years, we had very active hurricane seasons. Last year, not as much, but still very destructive. So this uh, year, uh, it might be uh, calmer than last year. And again, um, not a, an active uh, rain season if we have those El Niño conditions. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for following me and see you on the next video.